God is bringing a heavy impartation on somebody and you can receive it at any time of period as I'm preaching Amen. hallelujah Matthew chapter 6 I mean uh, Matthew chapter 6 verses 6 he says but when thou prayest he says enter into thy closet hallelujah he says enter into thy closet when you pray he says enter into thy closet and when thou hast shut thy door hallelujah pray to the father which is in secret and thy father which is in secret the bible says which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly thy and thee thy three times the one time hallelujah it's thy closet thy father and your reward tell your neighbor it's personal God is a God of secret that is why in Matthew he calls us to the secret place because he is a God of secret and I see that three things majorly are of that secret one if you're writing is the essence of his person the essence of his person is in the secret place okay Isaiah 45 verses 15 he says truly you are a God who hides himself you are a God who hides himself not as one which does not want to be seen but as one who of whose essence is in the hidden places and you'll understand that a bit later but two also touching the secret things of God also is his glory his glory is from the secret place okay Proverbs 25 verses 2 he says it is the glory of God to conceal a thing but the glory of kings it is to set out a matter anything that touches the concealment of things touches the glory of God hallelujah so it is his glory it's in his glory to conceal a thing it is in his glory it's in his essence to be in the hiding and in the secret place but also lastly um, it defines the places that allow him to function the way he has to function in every individual's life so it is the essence it is the glory and the places these three things are the reason why God is in secret and if you want to understand the places when you read Deuteronomy 29 29 common scripture he says the secret things belong unto God our Lord but the things which are revealed belong unto us and our children when you read the Hebrew version there it doesn't say that the secret things belong unto that's why there there is a bracket things belong that bracket means the word there things even here but those things that was added as emphasis for grammatical you know semantics really but in the original language the word things did not exist in fact the literal language was the secret places are unto the Lord our God and those secret places are that are revealed belong unto us and our children in other words God is in the business of revealing places in the spirit are you hearing me so the essence of God in secret is one that his essence is in secret his glory is in secret and his places are in secret you understand what I'm saying now if you do not know how to seek the God of secret of the secret God the God of secret the God which is in secret okay because if you go back to Matthew 6 6 he says and pray to thy father which is in secret are you following he says pray to thy father which is in secret pray to thy father which is in secret which is in secret because that's where he is it means that you don't have the integrity to place a demand on his essence his character nature as God on his glory as God 
but also on the places that he has ordained the Bible says that he has called of all nations one blood and he has appointed their times and their boundaries of habitation praise God he has appointed their boundaries of habitation he has he hath made of one blood of all nations of men to dwell on the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed okay and the bounds of their habitation now many Christians when they're talking about that they think only the physical places of men but here when we're talking about bounds of habitation the God of secret cannot ordain physical places of boundary without spiritual places of boundary because he's firstly of the spirit and then translates to the physical so when I'm talking about appointed times here we're talking about spiritual experiences and bounds of habitation here we're talking about the places in which we are exercised in those places in, in God are you following me and he says he does that in the next verse in the next line he says that they should seek the Lord if happily they might though he be not what far so the, the lava in the song of Solomon meets the watchmen and when they ask the watchmen that go about the city and the Bible says they found me about the city found me to whom I said so he him whom I saw loveth and the next verse says and it was a little that I passed from them in other words when, when the writer of this is writing the watchmen don't give the seeker the answer because I am not called to define your closet in my relationship I'm not called to teach you how to seek my God are you hearing me oh you know we still have people with an Old Testament mentality but in a New Testament dispensation the God of my father Apostle Grace you'll die seek your God seek your God seek your God Oh no, we are copying the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Those were men whose souls were relating with God. The temple curtain was rent. And now you have access as I. I can only point to your place. You cannot share in mine. It's my closet. My door. My God. My reward. Get it. when thou Matthew 6 6 he says when thou say that you're going to pray enter into thy closet this is a space that even separates the husband from the wife no Paul was clear in Ephesians he says for this reason shall a man leave his own house and go be joined together with his wife and the two shall become one spirit no okay then the two shall be one flesh but it's possible for couples to grow together spiritually and connect in the spirit but it's not obvious that all people that are one in the flesh are one in the spirit but it's possible to get on the same page spiritually are you hearing me however when it comes to the closet our closets can only reconcile but they are personal let me explain it you need to understand this what was what which which place in biblical history carried the highest level of the presence of God huh? the Holy of Holies on earth that was the highest level degree of the presence of God on earth it was the holiest of holies the holy of holies okay and how many people entered it how many people entered the highest level of the presence of God on earth for as long as the tabernacle lived one priest it was the holiest place on the holiest day 
Yom Kippur are you hearing me and one holiest priest high priest and then he enters there and the biggest level of service in the deepest space of the anointing was atonement of sin the, when God availed the highest level of his presence on earth men were dealing with sin but you see even in that <laughs> he put one fellow even in the coming of Christ the Bible says that he has gone there before us are you hearing me because even in that dispensation of him become he, he had to go in there as one fellow and he made intercession for us there was never a time in biblical history where two men entered the same closet and it's not going to happen in 2020 It's not going to happen in 2020. So you cannot dwell on another man's oil. You can receive impartation of it, but it cannot define your habit of exercising yourself in the presence. You must know how to shut your door. You must know how to enter your closet. You must know how to seek your father which is in secret and that father which you serve in secret the Bible says he rewards you openly no man with an open demonstration of power carries no secret place with God be not deceived there are no coincidences in the spirit they're not there some people think they are they're not you can assume they are because you've not seen much but there are no coincidences in the spirit. There is no man with an open result of the spirit without a secret place with God. Oh yeah, there are false prophets. Those ones, okay, those ones are them. I don't even want to know what they do. Me, I'm not here to talk about who is false. I'm talking about the true ones. You understand what I'm saying? And you know why I get tired of that conversation? Because today the false prophets are the ones who do miracles. The false prophets are the ones who do signs, miracles, and wonders. They're the demonstrators of the spirit. The holy ones are dying. Those ones who are consecrated of God, who are rightly going to heaven, have no result of an open manifestation of the inward secret place that they must carry with God. If you're Nabi Kowa, I got tired of that jazz. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Oh, the other one is a false prophet. No. Light your altar, put a flame in your closet and show us the true God. For the gospel is not mere talk, but it is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew and to the Gentiles. He says everything that is known of him has been revealed unto them. Even the Godhead. He says that now men are without excuse. Tell your neighbor we have no excuse. Oh, the other one is fake. You seek your God. Show us the true God if you can't Sirika, because people are sick people are troubled homes are broken cancers are killing men on beds people's destinies are short-circuited every day and we don't understand that ah, why is he supporting the cults you see you, you, just, you just have a spirit working on you. I'm not supporting anything. But if a fake fellow can give a solution. Nga he's fake. Nenga he has a solution. Nenga me who is, who is born again. I have no answer. I start to ask who is fake. Tell your neighbor, it's your closet. It's your door. He's your father. It's your reward. Jesus was a hundred percent God. Full of the Holy Spirit. Full of the anointing. 
he had a mandate called on his life when he gets in Luke chapter 5 verses 16 the message Bible says often as often as often he says as often as possible Jesus withdrew himself out of the way to to out of the way places for prayer these were not just physical the Son of God separated himself to certain spaces hundred percent God hundred hundred even if he doesn't pray he, he still stays God can you imagine that if he did not pray he would still stay what God are you hearing me but he found his place spiritually and because he found his place he found a God you understand what I'm saying that is why let me say this I had not planned to say it but let me say it. that is why there are many people God might though not intended never use to the fullest of what he has placed on their lives to do because we see the place of sacrifice but we don't we don't understand the space of communion when we're touching the blood we touch the thorns on the brow we touch the beating for the canes of the sickness we touch the nails at the cross and the blood but how many times do we talk about the blood of Gethsemane because those are conversations that we don't put on the table and because of that we have a very very inferior life of the Christian faith this man is in is a hundred percent God but he finds himself in a place of prayer and he says if it be possible if it be possible take this cup of suffering off me but if it be your will he says then let's go but when he does the Bible says out of his own body he shed blood the blood of a Gethsemane is not talked about because it's not a blood of gifted men it's a blood of ministers and when Paul bleeds the same he says for trouble me not about any man for in me I bear the scars of Christ but they don't understand that those scars were wounds of a man which bled and I'm not talking about what men do to beat us I'm talking about the other other things that we sweat for because God has an assignment with you you know and now let me start let me say what I see there's someone here God has been looking for you and you you know it you feel it you've tried to hang around normal people you've tried to relate with normal people you've tried to connect with normal people but there's this thing that is always separating you telling you even though you are with them you are different today today your space your pattern lot is going to be defined today 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 not tomorrow today Today. you see when when you are called a certain way you know it you know it when you are called a certain way even if you hang around you know it are you hearing me and and and, and because many have not waited on ministration they will never understand that blood what they see is the glam and glory the anointing on the altar but they don't see the tears they don't see the testations they don't see the wildernesses they don't see the wickedness that touches men of God that's why I tell people learn to pray for your man of God because you don't know what it takes for men of God to carry ministries many of you don't have a clue Believe me, if we had not seen God a certain way, we would have given up. A whole movement of well, the Welsh revival, Evan Roberts, that great man was killed by people because they did not know how to handle what was upon his life. A whole movement was killed because of people. 
he had not developed enough backbone to stand the words that people were throwing at him as arrows of a dart. And when the ranks are elevated and the graces become superior, there's a, there's a place where the responsibility shifts from your community and becomes national, becomes continental, becomes worldly. And you, you stop to preach because you found a revelation in Exodus 34 that blessed you, so you want to bless it with the other individuals. No. Every revelation carries a responsibility. Somebody shout hallelujah. It carries a burden. That's why the prophet calls it the burden of the word of the Lord. Because if it's not a burden, what, then we're not ministering. Our gifts are simply taking the the course are you hearing me and I'm not against gifts but I'm saying God there's a God beyond gifts there's a God beyond gifts in heaven there are no lame men there are no crippled men in heaven yet he says our conversations are in heaven from whence we look Heavens are not, heavenly places are not supposed to be visitations of Christians. Those are our dwellings. If a man in the Old Testament cultivated a certain level of relationship that he, 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 he would dwell there in a soulish realm, but connect to a heavenly thing, that he writes things like, and I returned under the sun, like he was from somewhere. He says, and I returned under the sun, and, and I saw. He says, I returned. The Ecclesiastes fellow says, I returned under the sun. It was more of a return. Now, you, you could have a lengthened days in a certain atmosphere. Moses would spend 40 days in the presence of God. And he comes back and they cannot even behold his face. And God says, ah, now for you, in him you live. In him you move. In him you have your own being. Oh, I have a heavenly visitation. Thank God, some of us, we are there. We just have encounters there. But we are there. Who has understood what I just said? Some of us, we are there. We just have encounters there. Some people visit and come back. Are you hearing me? So how can you keep in tune with the new stuff? Who has understood what I just said? How can you be in tune with the new stuff? It's not possible. Are you following what I'm saying? You get where I'm coming from? Now, the Jesus that I'm talking about separated himself in certain spaces. And this is a man I believe is met in Luke chapter 11 where I think he started to pray and something around him changed and he affected the certain space in the spirit that the Bible says in Luke chapter 11 verses 1 the Bible says and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place I love that every time the scriptures are using in a certain place because I'm going to come on the places in a certain place the Bible says when he seized one of his disciples said unto him Lord teach us to pray why this must have been an experience where somebody saw the son of god praying and there was something about the prayer of this man that caught the attention of another man's hunger for god some of you if you're readers of church history they sent a man to kill martin luther men two men i know they heard of that story they sent two men to kill martin luther and they came with the intention of shoot, kill. And the story says they found him praying in a room. And they went back and asked him, did you kill him? He said, no, we could not kill a man who prays that way. He, he was not asking for protection. This was a man whom they intercepted when he was in a certain place in God that even the spirit to kill him could not it was confounded who is understanding what i'm saying the spirit that would kill him was confounded and, and the story says we could not kill a man who prayed that way 
no it wasn't because he was shouting no but there's a dimension in prayer even if bullets came they'll just fly through because he he says he that speaketh in tongues the bible says he buildeth up himself he edifieth himself he he, he speaks mysteries unto god and he buildeth himself up you know every he didn't say he that speaketh in tongues edifies others it's thy closet he says he that speaketh in tongues builds himself up he 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 edifies himself are you hearing me and the place of edification is your increase in wisdom that's key wisdom is part of our edification virtue is part of our edification and piety which is the fear and reverence of God those are three things that define an edified individual if I have walked with God for so long I must have a certain fear of God I must have a certain virtue I must have virtue within me I must be good I must be a good person I just have to be a good person I can't be evil I just can't be evil because I'm, a def I'm an edified being I just can't be evil even if I say let me try to be I can't because there is goodness that flows when a man has been in the presence of God but three the wisdom of God also are you following me those three things define an edified individual one which is built up in the Lord somebody say amen, amen. but I'm gonna go a bit deeper now and in Hebrews chapter 7 9 sorry verses 7 he says into the second went the high priest alone once every year not without blood which he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people and he says the holy ghost this signifying that the way into the holiest was not yet made manifest while as at the first tabernacle while the first tabernacle was yet standing now when you study when he says the lay the way in the holiest of holies was not manifest he means that mankind had not received enough tenacity to enter that revelation because God deals with you according to your level of understanding who has understood what I say our places of understanding define our places of prayer our places of understanding define how much anointing we're able to carry and that is why I tell people don't ask for the anointing ask for understanding because if you get understanding he is more than able to give it to you this was the challenge with the children of Israel they were carnal for the carnal man the Bible says he's, 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 he, he cannot receive the things of the spirit for they are spiritually designed and he is incapable of understanding him because they are spiritual you understand they were not born again believers they were men which connected from the soulish realm when Jesus Christ comes and you receive him as your personal Lord and Savior, he, 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 has, he espouses you. You're betrothed. Are you hearing me? I said to you yesterday that Enoch's end is the Christian's beginning. Why? Because the Bible says Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. But the word there he was not. The literal Hebrew translation for the statement he was not is one which is taken as a man takes a wife. Are you hearing me that means this man habitually continually walked into fellowship with God to a place where God took him as a man would take a wife now when you are born again Paul says I have espoused you to one husband he says that you might be chaste virgins unto the Lord that means Enoch's highest level of habitual communion led him to a place where he's, he was taken he he was he, you see he could not have been transfigured from terrestrial to terrestrial without losing his name first because by order when you marry the man you carry his name he says I have son named you Peter he was Simon by Jonah the son of Jonah and he says I have son named you son named you son named you in other words not only has your name changed I'm working on your nature also who has understood what I just said yes in again the moon I'm going deeper now when you are betrothed it means he has drawn you to the place 
where Enoch was not for he took him are you hearing me and now the Hebrew man tells you he never saw death he could not see death but when some are praying they want to go where Enoch was so they will be not no you by reason of your faith in Christ you already not. Paul says, I'm dead, yet I live. Yet not, not, not I, but, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave him his life for me. So, okay. So, why aren't we having the results that Enoch had? Understanding. Understanding. That is why he says that the concealed things that belong, belong to God, but the revealed things are to us. In other words, revelation is the spirit that gives you access into the understanding of the things of God. That is why you never underestimate the spirit of revelation. The children of Israel were struggling for that one thing, that the Holy of Holies was not yet a revelation. God put that revelation on one fellow which was the high priest that means if there was a man in that dispensation who had the revelation of the highest place he would enter it was a revelational issue it was not an office issue there was stuff that was available in the priestly grace for example Caiaphas looks at them when they're touching the Christ he says know you not that it is ordained for one man to die for ye all this is a priest prophesying not in the understanding but in the authority of the grace of the office in which he's called otherwise if he carried the understanding he would not have been among them he would have separated himself but it's not written on scripture that Caiaphas said no to the crucifixion Caiaphas or that he was against anything or for anything it means there are things that will speak out of you as a prophet and there are things that you will speak as a prophet that is why he says that the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet that we might bring the balance between the prophet whose spirit is subject to him but carries not the maturity carries not the wisdom carries not the understanding of of that spirit of him which is subject to him and so you hear some prophets say i was just there and something talked out of me that's a growing one but as you grow in God the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet but some people also think that the spirit of all the prophet sorry when, when they read that the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet they think that the spirit of prophecy is subject to the prophet the spirit of prophecy is different from the spirit of the prophet and the prophet the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet but the spirit of prophecy is not subject to the prophet because the prophet is subject to the spirit of prophecy and his spirit is subject to him as a prophet so the prophet is the middle fellow between the spirit of prophecy up there and the spirit of that prophet who has understood what i just said so the prophet is an oracle of the spirit of prophet of, of the spirit of prophecy he's an oracle of the spirit of prophecy are you hearing me because now prophets are becoming god prophets are becoming god everyone who hears god now has become god if he says it is god ahithophel the bible says that the counsel of ahithophel was as though god spoke to man himself but look at how god exposes the highest level of a man's counsel and gives folly to the same spirit lets folly as in folly sits on the same man and before we know that he has caused and and, and set himself against the man after god's own heart god has called each one of us to our personal spaces and, and I wish I had time to just talk about places. Every other day, places are being elevated for individuals because of one, their degree of hunger and their place of revelation in the person of God. When we talk about reformation in the book of Hebrews, when he says until the time of reformation, 
the sacrifices were different. They were in drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinances. But when the time of reformation comes, the sacrifices change. The revelation of the sacrifices change. Okay? And because the revelation of the sacrifices has changed, it means the reformed mind knows how to sacrifice better. You understand what I'm saying? It understands the sacrifices of the spirit differently from the busy body that is in charge. That is why you have a mother which is cumbered by many things and Jesus calls her troubled and you have a Mary which is at the feet of the master and when he comes back after the death of Lazarus, Martha runs to him, if you were here my brother would not have died. He tells, he asks her where is Mary? Because if I can see her, I'll raise that fellow up. There are people, when Jesus comes, when Jesus just remembers them, something provokes the heavenly things to start working because they have a certain place with him he says she has received something that can never be taken away from her he is not a fool who should lose what he cannot keep to keep what he cannot lose and to know what is beneficial and permissible what is lawful but not expedient to separate those two is different from the man which is still in the realm of darkness and light evil and, and, and good, or of, 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 of precious and vile. No, that's easier. Even the man which is not born again is exercised enough to know what is precious and what is vile, depending on how much is seared in him. But now we are touching expedience. But how can we say all things are lawful when we've not even defined liberty? What is, how much free are you? Because if where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But what liberty are we talking about? Because some people think liberty is having a nice car, living in a nice house, and your children are all fine. No, those are all results of a free person. But they are not our liberty. Our liberty is in access. How much are you able to access when you pray? How much are you able to see when you pray? How much are you able to receive when you pray? How much are you able to provoke in the spirit realm? How much is available to you when you close your eyes and enter your closet? There are people, when they enter that closet, they come out with an answer. 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 One time there's something, a miracle I needed from God. And I just took my caliph of madness and I closed myself out. And I said, God, I'm not going to come out of this room until this particular individual calls. I know it is, I know it is impossible, but I'm not talking to a God of, impos of, of, of impossible. I'm talking of a God of possible. I put the phone there. Nengamba, whether... It takes two days or three. I think he saw that I was serious. Are you hearing me? That's why I said we need a generation that can literally press through things. Charles Parham got young men in 1901 to Opeka, Kansas City. Locked the doors and told them we are going to pray until the spirit comes. No toilet, no food time, no nothing. Pooh. That is the father of Pentecost 1901. Edward Joe Church, 1926, in Gahini, locked the door of the mission poop, and told young men, we are not leaving this room until he appears. But <laughs> we are not leaving this room until he appears. That is the fire that lit the East African revival. God is looking for men who can pray through. God, I'm going to pray until, until I am sure that I'm sure that I'm sure that I'm sure that I am sure that I am sure that I'm so sure that I'm sure that it is done. It will redeem many days. Your father, your father, thank you. No, we're talking about people who can literally tarry through. We don't mind waiting until it does something and we go out of this room knowing that there is something tangible. Who am I talking to? Have you ever gotten to a place of desperacy? Some of you, you still love yourselves. So I remember years ago, one time I said, but where is this God? I got my, you then that time I was in Uganda Christian University, Mokono. I got my Bible, nice shoes, and then a, a, a 
funny trouser that could get that and you don't know that it gets dirty. And I went on Bessania the mountain. Are you hearing me? And I said, now, eh? It's up to you to define how far we're having this, but we are having this. Hmm? I don't care how long, but we are having this right here. Guamani, how you're going to take me off this mountain, but we are having this conversation. Raka pa 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 pa. Few minutes later, zifu, we, spiritual realm. Spent period there. Came back in the body. And I could not tell the difference between my leg and my foot. And I've realized the more you see him, the more you want him. And the more you want him, the more you see him. And something started to take over me. That year, I don't remember eating lunch. Because lunch time, I was in the chapel. Brakatalabaya. I missed you. Our things. Evening after the last lecture. Brike Leleba. Zoro Bobobo. 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 11, midnight. And I walk back to my hostel. Rabalaba. Jike Praka. And I enter that hostel room. And there's also one bun and one glass of water. And I take it like I'm eating the best meal in the world. And I remember one time when guys come to visit me and they could not enter my room. They were falling on the door. Poo, poo, poo. One at a go. Poo, poo. They're just coming. What's in here? What's in here? What's in here? They couldn't enter my room. Why? Because they were, it, it had become a closet. God wants to put something on you. That even the car you drive gets in traffic. And a Muslim receives Jesus Christ. Receives a vision. That two must live men. And, and let me tell you. I was hungry. Very hungry. 2020. I'm a hundred times hungrier. Because the more I see him. The more I want him. And the more I want him. Is the more I see him. So I see that every man has their own space and place ordained for them. And that's the place from where you call God. And that elevates as understanding comes. Never assume that you all gather in this room and you're in the same place. Every man has a certain place of prayer. Every man has a certain place. Every man has a certain place. There are people who need 20 minutes to pray to demonstrate power. There are people. <laughs> so I'm no longer in the realm of let even because there's a place that I have with God. You understand what I'm saying? That is the thing I'm cultivating every day. I don't mind where anybody else is. I mind my own course. I mind my business. I began and I'm just about that. I'm here. Over who fell or who didn't, that's none of my business. Who is pregnant, who isn't, that's none of my business. I have a course. And that's the thing I'm keeping well. Because that's the thing that separates my voice from the noises. That's the thing that has to give me a voice print. That's the thing that must give me my distinction. That's the thing that must encapsulate me to his presence. It's, that's, that's me. Somebody shout amen. amen. Now, the impartation that God wants to put upon your life is and this is what the lord told me by the way every man attending this meeting was for this one nobody missed who was supposed to be here nobody nobody so don't even say banange you missed no nobody has missed nobody has what tell your neighbor nobody has missed because god ordains things for people but this is what I say. This is what I see. 
God wants to consecrate your place, you to your own place. Because it's one thing to rely on another man's. Eh? I'm talking about your personal one. Oh, yeah, you had it. Now let God elevate it. Are you hearing me? Shut your door. 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 It's your door. It's yours. Nobody, nobody, nobody can shut it. Shut your door. Why? Because I'll give you this one story and finish. There are times I have found myself in trouble, some sort of trouble. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Okay? Are you following what I'm saying? And I've seen trouble. I've seen things in this world. I've been on the verge of death before. I've hit coma before. A man has walked into my meeting to shoot me. And the power of God goes through him. And he comes back weeping. I've seen it all. I, I'm, I, I don't fear. Mbu what will come because there's a place i saw god from eh? there are periods i would take during that time i was taking 13 flights in a space of one week and when i went and went into the second week there were 21 flights so i ask for i want you to take me out you ask one day they'll take you to the airport when you don't want to go But I remember very well that when they told me you cannot, there is no way you can pass there, it's impossible. And entering that, not entering that door meant that I was going to miss a meeting. And as born again, I couldn't tell these Christian fellows that I needed it. So when, when everything failed and they want to walk away, I put my head down like this. And the moment I bow my head like this, I'm carried in the spirit and immediately I'm before Jesus we're in a conversation he tells me let's talk about this and he says why don't you just speak to angels and they do this this is Jesus now I used to read uh, even I speak in tongues of men and angels but it was a scripture eh? in Corinthians if I speak in tongues of men and angels it was a scripture that I used to speak scripture I used to think it was a scripture that was the day the understanding came into my spirit and while I was in that airport I bowed my head like this put my stom my hand on the stomach and I say read low bozo five seconds a man the man in that room looked at me like Phew. he says someone has told me to take you he says someone has told me to. he held my hand like this are you hearing me the officer and held my hand like this and took me through the door they say is impossible he just said like this are you hearing me and then after he released me he walked out like that you understand i, I knew that an angel must have told this guy if you don't do it we shall do it are you hearing me we are even in the space of speaking to the angelics a language they can understand because that's our forte that's who we are in God now we are brace yourself for some of the greatest anointings some of the greatest miracles some of the greatest signs that are gonna happen in our time and we are gonna see those things together get to your feet like I said this is more of impartation no? so it's gonna be more of how much you're ready to receive 
who has understood what I just said it's going to be much of how much you are ready to receive the power of God is here I want to pray with you God is going to move in the few seconds in just a few seconds and he's going to define a place for somebody and I see an elevation of the spirit that is going to give you a precision in your life of prayer like you have not imagined in a long time some of you from today they are going to call you out of his presence they're not going to you're going they're always going to be looking for you because you're going to start sitting you know where i'm at now i want to be alone every time because i can't get enough of this thing and every other day i receive an impartation every other day i receive something and this thing defines the reward openly increase will not cease multiplication will not cease somebody raise your voice and speak to god come on come on come on come on Thank you. 
launch you so deep so deep so deep so deep put it down so deep so so deep so 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 deep Somebody is going to a place of no return. I said you're going to a place of no return. I said you're going to a place of no return. I said you're going to a place of no return. I said you're going to a place of I need ashes. I said you're going to a place of no return. God is taking you to a place of no return. Put up your hands. God anoints you. Hira yere re 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 bo. Shira kaye. Oh ba yala kata. 
something is coming for the prophets I see the anointing of anybody in the prophetic anointing oh receive it receive it receive it receive it receive it anybody prophetic anybody prophetic anybody prophetic anybody prophetic anybody prophetic anybody prophetic defining your place of hearing him receive it receive it receive it God is giving you a language he's defining a tongue for you